Hello, and thank you for joining us here for another segment of Wildlife Wednesday at Crow. My name's Rachel, and today I'm going to be meeting down at the hospital, Missy Fox, one of our certified veterinarian technicians, to talk a little bit about radiograph imaging. Now, for those of you who may not be as familiar with the terminology, you may hear the word x-ray used a lot. X-ray is what is used to take the image, whereas the radiograph in and of itself is the image. Now with radiographs and recovering patients at Crow's Wildlife Hospital, we utilize them to appropriately diagnose various levels of injuries. And um, those could be anywhere from traumatic injuries where we might see broken bones, as well as foreign bodies like fishing hooks or other discarded materials left out in nature. So let's go down to the hospital and see Missy now. Hey, Missy Fox here. Thanks for joining us for Wildlife Wednesday. Today, we're gonna to talk about our x-ray machine and how it's important diagnosing what is going on with the animals that come into crow. So here is basically our setup. We have a digital x-ray here, which is really awesome. What we love about this table too, is it has the ability to move the tabletop. We do get huge sea turtles in, which helps us a lot take different views of the huge sea turtle without having to drag them around on the table. So this is our x-ray here. This is how we set the x-rays up. And there is an anode in here, which actually electromagnetic magnetic shoots into the anode and the x-rays come out here. And you can see this white light. It shows where we need to place the patient. And we can change the size of this, which is called collimating, which helps us get a more detailed x-ray of the animal. So I've got some candidates here that need x-rays. So for a plop rad, we'll take our bird, hide him under a towel. They're actually pretty good for it. And we'll put him on the table like this. We'll run around the corner, yell shooting so nobody gets shot with x-rays. And we'll come back and grab the patient. So that's something we do as a quick um, look to see if this guy came in off the beach, maybe you have a fractured wing, or maybe we'll accidentally now find a hook, so that's a secondary finding for that guy. Another thing we can do with the smaller animals um, is do a burrito roll. So you can take a little baby squirrel or a rabbit, if you don't want to knock them out under anesthesia, and roll these guys up, and you can take an x-ray that way. And then collimate down to the size of your patient, so we get a nice detailed x-ray. Another thing we do for the patients when they're more stable is anesthesia. So here's our anesthesia machine. So if they look really good and they've come in because they've immediately been hit by car, the animal it looks healthy, great body condition score, meaning that this is an acute injury, we can knock them out under anesthesia. So for anesthesia, you kind of have to do MacGyvering for wildlife. They don't sell anesthesia masks that would fit a pelican or a great blue heron or a sandhill crane. So we use these water bottles as the anesthesia masks to knock them out under anesthesia. And then we have the smaller ones made for smaller animals um, that are made for veterinary medicine that we can use for the smaller songbirds and things like that. So we want to position our animals when we do x-ray so they're under anesthesia so we can tape the animal to the table. So one of the main views we do for birds because they lay nicely on their back on a table is called a VD, ventral dorsal view, meaning the x-ray beam is going to the ventral side of the body and coming out the dorsal side. So we lay them on their back and we actually use tape and we'll tape their wings out to the side and tape their feet down so we can get a nice perfect x-ray of the bird. If this was my patient, I'd collimate in on him and make sure he's straight, make sure his keel or breastbone is lined up with the beam and then I'd run around the corner and take a picture. Another view we do on the birds is, and any other animal, is a lateral. So we'll put them on their side. Whatever side is fractured or affected goes to the table. It gives the best detailed x-ray. So this guy is gonna get a right lateral, right side to the table, because we don't know what's wrong with him. So we'll take the wings and we'll actually tape them back. Pull the little legs out. And then we can also see what's going on is in his salomic cavity. So we can actually see his kidneys on that view. We can see the lungs, we can see the heart. We can actually see air sac lines. So it gives the veterinarians another tool to diagnose what might be going on with that bird, um, such as aspergillosis, which is something that the birds 
um, get out into the, out in the wild or pet birds can get it too, but it's a fungus that can go throughout the body. And a lot of times you can actually see that on x-ray. Um, and then we can also jump to endoscopy um, if we think that we suspect aspergillosis. So this would be a lateral view, view we would take for these guys. Uh, and then if you have a mammal, you can do something called a dorsal ventral view, DV, back through the dorsal side, out the ventral, the x-ray will be. We'll just tape the little legs out. We want them straight again to take a nice x-ray so the vets can diagnose what's going on. And we'll run around the corner and shoot as well. Um, lateral, same thing with the mammals. We'll tape the little legs out in a running position so they're not overlapping so we can see if this little squirrel that fell 30 feet from his nest has a fractured leg or not, or if he has spinal injury. So we'll do a lateral on this guy as well. Um, and then you can do a VD on a mammal, but a lot of times you end up having to use a trough with them because it's harder to put a mammal on their back. Um, so we can lay them in a trough and take an x-ray that way as well. So another positioning we like to do is an H view. We've made this little um, thing that we can set the birds on. So a lot of times the birds will come in, little songbirds with a coracoid or clavicle fracture, which is their major flight bones. We can't see very well on x-ray because this is not a dental x-ray, which would be ideal to have for these small birds. So we can do an H view and tape them to this to get a view from above. Um, and maybe we can see the fracture better because the bones are so tiny. So I have some x-ray images over here pulled up. Um, we do something when an animal comes in debilitated or right in off the beach, uh, something called a plop rat. Plop them down, take a radiograph. Um, this is so we don't knock them out under anesthesia if they're unstable. So for example, this gopher tortoise that came in hit by car, do you see anything exciting on this x-ray here? So as you can see, she was hit by car, but we also found that she is carrying eight eggs here. So we know with this tortoise that it's important that the rehab team sets up a room for her with substrate so she can possibly lay eggs while she's in our care. Sometimes gopher tortoises are with us for several months because they take a long time to heal. Another interesting x-ray here that I have pulled up is a baby osprey. Let me get to the original picture. We got in a baby osprey and the finder said it was not flying. He took an x-ray and you can see here that the ulna and the radius is fractured on this baby osprey. So we did take him to surgery and the veterinarians placed, let me clear these out, some pins in the bone. So this osprey is actually doing really well. He's had his pins pulled down. He's actually outside in our rehab cage practicing flying. So again, x-ray, he had a drooping wing. We found that he had fractured radius and ulna. Here's another gopher tortoise we have. He just had these grommets placed and we pulled his shell back together here with wire with the grommets that are epoxied on the outside of the shell. You can also see that the veterinarians just placed a feeding tube on this gopher tortoise. He's not eating really well right now for us in captivity. So when they start feeling better, they get better at eating outside where we have people grazing tortoises as a volunteer job. So you can see the feeding tube we've placed here. Here is another interesting x-ray on this Cooper's hawk that came in. So we see that he unfortunately has some fractures. He has a fractured leg. He has a fractured wing. So these white opacities here are actually pieces of a pellet. So unfortunately, somebody shot this Cooper's hawk. So this guy, if he would have come in just for this fractured wing, that's something that we definitely could have treated him for. But somebody that shot him accidentally shot right too close to that joint there. So this Cooper's hawk um, could not make it through the treatment with the shattered a bone there, right by the joint. Another thing we get in often are animals found dragging their legs out on the road. So most of the time they're hit by car. So this rabbit was brought into us. Um, we took an x-ray 
And you can see here that he actually had a fracture in his spine. So it's really important that we get these animals in. The vets do a full exam on them, and then they decide if they need x-rays or not. So we would know that this animal actually has a fracture with the x-ray. And another culprit frequently here, because we live near beaches, are animals that unfortunately swallow fish hooks. So here is a laughing gull that ingested a fish hook. And you can see here on the lateral view, which is the side view, you can see where this hook is right here. So it is really helpful if someone catches a bird accidentally with a hook to get them into crow right away, because we possibly can remove that hook with our endoscopy um, before it actually gets into the GI tract or the stomach embedded. So this is how the x-ray machine is really important in diagnosing, diagnosing immediately what is going on with the animals when they come in. Because what the finder says that they found wrong might not be exactly what we find on x-ray. Thank you, Missy, for sharing all of that wonderful information with our audience. Now, if any of you are local and visitors to the area and wanting to learn more about the use of radiographs and x-rays within Crow's patient care methods, come over to our Visitor Education Center. We have an entire exhibit dedicated solely to Radiograph 101. Also, if you're trying to find other ways to support Crow, starting this upcoming Monday, uh, the Wazy Foundation will match up to $5,000, any donations made through our specific Crow fundraiser. So, or it, so if you're wanting to support Crow on a further level, consider donating starting on Monday or continue to share our social media information. Have a good day.